Lazy and Lisa on FM, on DAB, or listen to your heart's content on iHeartRadio. It's the pick of the bunch, 96 FM. Coming up on the podcast today, Ben O'Shea reviews Mortal Kombat. Oh, there's blood everywhere. Uh, Red <laughs> Army, uh, they're going off because Bryce Cotton back in action with the uh, mighty Wildcats. And maybe it's the Bryce Cotton story. We want to, to know who you want to see in a biopic. I'd love to see the boy from Tucson, Arizona. On the big screen. Rate the flick with Ben O'Shea on 96 FM. Ben, uh, we were right next to each other last night, and <laughs> you know, because Clazy and I were in the gold class for the Good Food Guide's uh, showing of 2040. A very different thing happening <laughs> right next door at Italy in the event cinemas that you were hosting. Yes, uh, I was there for the Perth premiere of Mortal Kombat, mm. which could not be more different to what you guys were well, there for. Well, it was for. Damon Gamow's movie about regenerating the planet and uh, called 2040 sustainability yeah, no, so yeah. very different ben. you would have been seen you would have seen all the cosplayers out the front of the cinema oh, we that did. I was in we, we did. it was uh, yeah watching we, the two cues form was yeah, very uh, different. Was we quite could amusing. sense the excitement it was <laughs> palpable it was palpable people <laughs> mm. were pumped last night for this film uh, not least because half of the people in the cinema were were related to the director who's from Perth uh, Simon McCoy who's come from the advertising world he's won international award, awards for directing commercials so, really uh, yeah. this is his first feature film which was Brilliant. made in South Australia. It's the biggest budget film ever shot in South Australia. And I actually went to the set. Really? Yeah, I went to the set in 2019, which feels like it was about 14 years ago. Yep, yep, yeah. COVID, and, yep. and it is incredible production. Like, I think it cost, it could have cost up to about $80 million. Right. Uh, they shipped 30 metric tons. How does the first time director get that uh, kind of. It's, well, wow. incredible. it's a good. He's, so he was tapped by uh, James Wan to do it. So yep. he's, you know, Saw so, Guy. Yeah, Saw, Saw Guy yeah. and yeah. did Aquaman. Another Aussie. And, and he's from Perth as well. So yeah. there's probably. Yeah. A bit of a connection there. Okay. Uh, and so they, they shipped at one point 30 metric tons of red dirt from Cooper Pedy down to Adelaide to build this temple and recreate Cooper Pedy in, in the soundstage. Uh, they went through hundreds of litres of fake blood. Like, it was a massive, massive mm. production. Wow. And, and so the, the video games, I think they're up to about number 11 now, something like that, and there's yeah. spin-offs, all this kind of stuff. Rich, rich universe. Uh, and there was a couple of live-action movies back in the 90s, if you remember. I think 1995 was the first one, which starred Christopher Lambert. Sort of yeah, the, big dude. At yeah, the height of his Highlander. He was Tarzan, wasn't he? Yeah, much, yeah. um, and look, they, those films weren't good. Like, they were critically hammered, but they <laughs> did pretty well at the box office, the first one in particular. Right. And now they've sort of got a cult following, even though they're so cheesy. Okay. Uh, and they were notable because they were almost bloodless. So for a, for a movies that were based on a, one of the most violent video games, yeah. um, the fans of the games were probably never really felt that they honoured the spirit of the game. Okay. This uh, movie, on the other hand... It's big money and blood. Yeah, yeah. Well, this R-rated. A, a lot of filmmakers okay. will dial it down a little bit so they can sneak in as an M or an M15+. Okay. Right. Mm. Because it's like big commercial advantages. Exactly. Uh, uh, but you don't want to be R. Yeah, you don't want to be R. No. But they never tried to do anything else with this movie. Right from oh, the start, okay. they, they said, if we're going to honour this video game, it's got to be R-rated. It's got to have what they call in the games the fatality. Ah, uh, okay. which is a, a, <laughs> So there's claret everywhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a move in the video game where you, you, know, you sort of get your opponent, you're just about to defeat him, and then you do some super violent kill move. Like pull, right. his, pull his spine out. Or oh, yes, yeah, you do. Pull his, his spine yeah, yeah, it's out. Cra- oh. It's crazy. Re- it is remove horrible. a brain yeah, from the brain. It, it is horrible. And so this <laughs> film shows a lot of those types of things. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it follows the story of this MMA fighter, Cole, who uh, is born with this weird birthmark, looks a bit like a dragon, doesn't realise that it's marked him as one of Earth's champions who has to oh. fight uh, the best fighters from another planet and the winners take control of the Earth, right? So big stakes. Right. Uh, and, and he doesn't know anything about Mortal Kombat. So he's meant to be the audience's eyes, help okay, us right. sort of understand what it's all about. Yep. Um, uh, and the rest of the characters are, you know, over the top, larger than life, martial arts experts. Some some really great martial arts experts from Asia, like Joe Taslam, who was in the Raid, which is a cult Indonesian um, martial arts movie, uh, and then and some great Japanese actors as well. Mm. Uh, but the scene stealer of all scene stealers is Josh Lawson, yeah, uh, who Aussie. plays Kano, who's an Aussie mercenary who was in the first movie, right. uh, and every scene that he's in is just amazing. Uh, like the most violent thing I've ever seen Josh Lawson do on screen before this was give Zach Galifianakis a nipple cripple in the <laughs> Will right. Ferrell movie, that's The right. campaign. campaign. And so as Kano, <laughs> he takes it up a notch. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, but you know, overall, though, you, like you have to remember, this is a film that's based on a video game. So it's, it's yes. there's, there's some limitations, I think, straight oh, away yeah. in terms yeah. of the plot, in terms of character development. You have to kind of throw those things out of the window um, mm. because you just, you know, 
you, you, you're what talking plot? about yeah, plot. Yeah, you're talking about a source material that is. I guess very limited. It's a video game. It's a video right? game. Yeah. People know what they're getting. So you know what you're getting. If you, if they you know what they want. Keep that in mind. Yeah. I think there are some things to like about this movie. Uh, you you embrace the blood and guts. It be, kind of becomes part of it. It's, it's very, you know, cartoonish. You just so. lose yourself in the yeah, carnage. You lose yourself. Yeah, you okay. lose yourself in the carnage. It's right. a good way to put it, Clancy. Uh, and so, like, it, but it's worth seeing for Josh Lawson. Yeah. Um, mm. If you've got a strong stomach. So this is the Aussie actor, the tall Aussie actor who was in Any Questions for Ben, that postcard yeah, yeah, to yeah, Melbourne yeah, movie. Yeah, which House is, of Lies. Yeah. Okay. TV show that he's been yeah, that's in right. over in America. With Don Cheadle, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. So he, it's very different for him. Um, mm. But he's also he's just also directed Long Story Short, that uh, the uh, that romantic comedy that was uh, right. in Australian cinemas just recently. Well, so, I'd rather trip on a cactus, yeah. but I know that there are people that love the gaming and they're going to love this, and as last night was testament to it, so what is it getting? Well, look, if you're willing to trip on a cactus, you could be in Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> well, she's pretty tough. <laughs> so, I'm going to give this one... Two and a half stars. All okay. Right. Fair. All right. Yeah. And okay. Five for the hype, maybe. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Good on you, Ben. Thanks, Thanks ben. Mortal Kombat. Clairsy, did you watch the show on Netflix? There was two seasons of it mm. called Mind Hunter. No, negatory, and I've uh, oh. heard things about it, but never got around to seeing Mind Hunter. In a nutshell, it was about the uh, setting up of the FBI profiling department of serial killers. Okay. Uh, in right. fact, it was a. Uh, but a lot to do with a guy named John Douglas, who, you know, like a good serial killer You do like a good story, yeah. I read his Podcast, book. Podcast, yeah. Um, anyway, Mindhunter Season 3 might be happening after all. There's reports today that sources close to Netflix say the streaming service and David Fincher, mm. this is why it was so good, because David Fincher is a wonderful director. Great director, yeah. They're back in talks for a third season after hopes had been dashed. Our hopes were completely, we'd given up. Back yeah. in January 2020, the series leads, Jonathan Groff, Holt McCallany, how's Great that for name? Holt yeah. McCallany, cool and Anna Torv were re- released from their contracts. It was then that Netflix put the show on indefinite hold. I mean, when you okay. let go all the stars, mm. that's, that doesn't get any more on hold than that. Okay. And we collectively grieved. However, a lot has changed since then. Like series creator Fincher signing an exclusive four-year development deal with Netflix. Oh, now you're talking. You know, he made Mank, and yeah. Mank is, uh, yeah. which was released by Netflix, it's received positive reviews from critics and has been nominated for 10 Academy Awards this weekend, yep. including Best Picture and Best Director. All the more reason for Netflix and Fincher to be interested in bringing the psychological thriller back. Now you're talking to Mank. Uh, Gary Oldman was in Mank. Gary Oldman's yeah. in Mank. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, that's the, the story about us. Citizen Kane. Uh, yeah, Orson Welles. Yeah. Orson Welles. Yep, yep. Um, so it, uh, it's looking very promising that we will get season three. And I hope so because season two ended on such a cliffhanger. Really? Had you hang I don't. I think I read that it wasn't Netflix's biggest rating show. Right. Uh, but the people that it talk about your cult following, yep. the people that saw it were mad for it. Okay. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll probably get the word out there and get a few more people watching oh, well, it. I if think that, so, yeah. If that's what they need yeah, to get I, it happening. I think you're right. And, you know, when you look at someone like David Fincher, this quality filmmaker it was for so many years. brilliantly that's shot. The, the lines have become blurred between what's TV and what's, you know, with all the streaming services, what's TV and what's movies now. It doesn't matter. It's just about good shows. The, it, I mean, s- to look at, it yeah. was fantastically shot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, here's the test. I haven't got all FBI type stuff, but I've got a few uh, people who like to invest. Investigate. So, yeah. is it better than uh, okay. Murder She Wrote? <laughs> Does it top uh, the Rockford Files? <laughs> How about the Night Stalker with Darren McGavin? Oh, hey? you're pushing it now. Oh, I'm pushing it. The envelope. Night Stalker with Darren McGavin. Uh, uh, yes, it does, but only just. Okay. All right. We'll work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Shaw Report on 96 FM. The Academy Awards are being handed out this weekend and the Oscars gift bags are back in full force. Ah. This is, this is you know, what all the nominees and presenters get. Sure. And this year they're getting a swag of goodies totaling $60,000. Wow. Most of it is luxury holidays. Nice for those who can take them. Of course. There's a two-night trip to a private resort in Fiji, valued at $8,000. Four night, $8,000 for two nights? Yeah. Four nights at the Sail Rock Resort in Turks and Caicos, valued at $10,000. Three nights at the Dominican Republic's Casa del Campo, valued at 3000 And three nights at the Kahari Resort in the Bahamas. You can only imagine the quality of the shampoo at these hotels that you could oh, steal you'd in the little bottles. Oh, you those for the spare bathroom, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Like every show bag you ever bought, it's then fleshed out by a fair bit of crap. Um, hmm. Probably one of 
Gwyneth Paltrow's questionable candles, oh, stuff like no. that. Oh, no, yeah. Michael Richards, a.k.a. Kramer from Seinfeld, is being sued by his neighbour for cutting down her trees to improve mm-hmm. his ocean view. This is so cheeky. Richards and his wife, I mean, it's beyond cheeky. Yeah. Richards and his wife allegedly chopped down the woman's six-metre-high Brazilian pepper trees, trees that took 20 years to reach that maturity and trees that she says would cost her more than $62,000 to replace. She's also seeking another $200,000 for the loss of aesthetic value to her property. Mm. I mean, how furious would you be? Yeah, they're big trees. It's, it's nearly enough to stop me watching Seinfeld reruns. Well, you, no, nothing's going to stop that, is it? <laughs> you could write a whole episode. Jerry could write a whole episode, it's couldn't he? certainly an episode, no? yeah. yes. Gotta love that. More of this podcast in just a sec. 96 FM. A couple in Taiwan have basically, um, uh, under Taiwan laws, which entitles newlyweds, eight days holiday. Day, a couple have married. For- I love that they get eight days holiday oh, for getting so married. Bizarre. A couple have uh, attempted to foil the system by marrying four times each other. Yeah. They got married four times in the space of a month, so they could get thirty-two days of paid leave under the uh, the Taiwan laws. They also had to get divorced four times they to did. be able to do this. And the divorce lawyer was rubbing his or her oh. hands together. What? Isn't uh, that bizarre? And, and this this worked out in their favour. You would think well, that all is- the Legalities of yeah, this was a glitch in the system, right? Yeah. So the uh, the employers basically get fined for trying to stop him because he uh, put his hand up. He said, "Hang on, why am I being stopped for this? This is actually uh, the loophole." And he's climbed through the loophole with said wife four times in in thirty odd days. Gee, he's going to be popular when he does go back to work, though, I isn't he? Right, I mean, yeah. you know, his future is real bright. Yeah. So the story is that over a period of thirty seven days, he and his wife <laughs> I say that loosely because she wasn't for, for several like days an echo. in that. Wife, yeah, wife, wife, wife. 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 Uh, a bit like um, you know, the, the some of the great Hollywood stars, you know, <laughs> yeah. Liz Taylor getting married several times to Richard yeah. Burton. Uh, they got married four times and divorced three times, as you mentioned, yeah. claiming the full eight days for each of their, uh, <laughs> their said weddings and marriages, but they were going back and forward. And, you know, marriage is hard enough, let's be honest. Well, they're not on maths. <laughs> I know. And, I mean, with all this... Uh Mucking around, uh, getting married and divorced. Th- th- when would they have had their honeymoon? Uh, no, they, they were I think trying that was, to stretch out their. Yeah, I think that was part of the story. Is that the, oh, this know. is how they spent their honeymoon? <laughs> yeah, that was the fun, the oh, fun and gee, games. You've got high hopes for this relationship, haven't you? Uh, it's probably not going to go. It's not probably going to end <laughs> well. However, they've got plenty of days off, so I, I guess they had you know days in lieu. Imagine the presents. Oh my god! How many no, presents but, you would have got four times over? But are those presents like that beautiful serving dish uh, or some of? That, uh, yeah. that China, uh, do you have to hand it back if you're continually I don't getting know. divorced? What is the um, the thing on that? Maybe it's just anything the- over a hundred bucks. Maybe you have to hand back. I'm not really know. sure. Would it depend on how long you've been married? Yeah, but I would imagine there'd be divorce lawyers. Imagine how confused the families would be, especially if they need to have a witness every time they get married. Imagine would you how pick embarrassed a- the families would <laughs> be? Is more the fam- point. Different family member. It is sounding like married at first sight, isn't it? Arizona's favourite son, last year's season and grand final series MVP, and the number 11 for our own Perth Wildcats, Bryce Cotton on 96FM. It's no ordinary chat, and Jester's is no ordinary pie. Hiya, Bryce. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Can't complain. That's yeah. good. Hey, Bryce, you needed a bit of a break after so many games in, uh, was it, 5 and 11, mate. Uh, how's the rest been and what did you get up to? Yeah, um, all I did was pretty much rest up. Uh, Sounds body good. was definitely tired. And uh, it was just good to kind of shut off, you know, not only physically but mentally. Just yeah. kind of get away from the game for a couple of days and, you know, now I'm able to uh, refresh. Yeah. Well, last Friday, the Wildcats beat the Hawks by 14 points. Um, during that game, Todd Blanchfield made six three-pointers. Any tips for budding basketballers on how to score three-pointers so consistently? Um, Practice. Well, if you've been watching me play, I'm not the one to ask for tips right now, so you probably have to go to Toddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd be happy with your tips any time. <laughs> I guess it's practice. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, absolutely. You know, repetition. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the more and more you practice, the more comfortable you get out there um, on the floor. And it just it makes the hoop seem bigger and bigger once you make a couple shots in a row. Well, you you did just mention, you know, resting mentally as well as physically. What's the percentage of physical and mental that you need to have to be on at your best? Um, I mean, it probably depends on the player, but I would say 
uh, your mental is probably a little bit more important than really the physical aspect. Okay. Yeah, because you yeah. can have all this talent and skills in the world, but if you don't believe in yourself or you know you're kind of thinking too much out there on the floor, you'll never play as good as your skills actually are. That's so. interesting. Okay, you be able to put it all together. Okay. Wow. Exactly. Hey, Bryce, a lot's been made about those so many games in such a short period. How does that affect uh, your training when you've got five games in 11 days? Obviously, it must change. You can't be full on. Yeah, yeah, obviously it's got to be give and take. You know, when you're playing a lot more games, practice won't be as intense and all that. But, um, I mean, that's not really something I would complain about. That's the Mm. time where you kind of use your time to recover. But it's definitely an adjustment. But, um, you know, all the teams go through it. And, um, you know, we we dropped a couple games within the last five. I think we dropped two of them. But that's okay, though. You know, Mm -hmm. wins and losses come a part of the season. And, as long as we bounce back and fix our kinks, we should be all right. The Breakers uh, was one of those games on Sunday, only by five points. But their loss in overtime last week, that's got to be motivation for them. to. I mean, that's got to smart, losing in overtime. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. We knew coming in uh, to that game as well, it was going to be a hard-fought game. Uh, we did a pretty good job jumping out in the third quarter, and yep. then it just seemed towards the end of that quarter, they went on a run and – we weren't able to put a stop to it, and that's how they took hold of that game. Yeah. Hey, Bryce, uh, you know, courage is a big thing in sport, and you're all gutsy to be out there because it's just a tough game. You've had Damian Martin around the club for a long time, and now Mitch Norton, he, uh, with 250 NBL games, he, he's a, like a he's a battering ram, isn't he? He goes where angels fear to tread. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's, he's a true warrior, man. He puts mm. his body on the line night in, night out. Uh, such a great leader, and he's very selfless. You yeah. Know, and, uh, whenever you're playing with a guy like that, it kind of motivates you, even if you're tired or, you know, maybe you want to take a break. But when you see him put his body on the line, get his lip busted or dive on the floor yeah. for a ball he probably can't get, um, it just makes you want to pick your game up. So he has he has a very contagious uh, energy out there on the floor. Well, Bullets at RAC Arena tomorrow night. Tip-off is at 7.30. What are you expecting from the Bullets? Um, I mean, I'm expecting a very hard fought game. Last mm-hmm. time we played them, I uh, went down to the final minute or so, I believe. So uh, it's going to be a great game, you know. Um, but for us, I think this game is about us being consistent and focusing more about what we do rather than worrying about um, our opponent this time, considering yeah. how last game went. Okay, Bryce, we've got some homework for you, mate. We talk about the ball club a lot. We talk about your your skills and your success. But when we talk to you next week, we want to find something about Bryce Cotton, something you could tell us we may not know about. This could have been from little Bryce in Tucson or when you were starring at Providence in college. So if you think about that, and we'll, have, we'll instead of putting you on the spot today, we'll find out some stuff about Bryce Cotton that we may not know next week. He's very nosy. I apologise, Bryce. <laughs> awesome. Since you're giving me a lot of time, I'll try to make yeah, sure. Yeah, see what you can come up with. Yeah. yeah, even if you make it up. All right. Good on you, man. Good luck. You know, the other day we were talking about life's simple pleasures. Mm. One of my favourite simple pleasures is a shower, um, yeah. and especially in when it's cold. And oh, nice, isn't that magnificent? Reasonably long, sorry, uh, hot shower. Uh, I probably shower twice a day, if, you know, certainly once for sure. Mm, or but there's four this, times if you're staying at a hotel. <laughs> There's this, oh, there's a bath there too. <laughs> there's a doctor, Dr. Chris's name is, he's on a, a one of these, you know, morning shows. I think it's in the US. Good morning, it's called. Mm. Um, very. Uh, oh, they had a long meeting to come up with that. They had a they? long meeting to yeah. come up with that one. You wouldn't call it now, a bad he's, morning, would you? he's saying that we shouldn't shower every day. And it's all to do with, you know, having a, um, a layer of bacteria on you. Good bacteria, of course. He says healthy skin mm. should have a layer of oil and a balance of microorganisms and friendly bacteria. You don't want to know any of that, do you? Mm. And having a shower every day can remove that friendly bacteria. Surely it depends on what you're doing. I mean, if you've Quite been, possibly, yeah. if you've just been sitting on the couch mm. reading a book, yep. sure, you might not need to shower every day. But if you've been, you know, if you've walked the bridges, <laughs> <laughs> you might be a bit stinky. You might be a bit stinky. Yeah, I don't know. It's just no. What have you been on the couch? Uh, you've been on the aforementioned couch, but you've been there for four days binging Netflix. Okay, well, you probably four need a days shower. down the track, yeah. 
At the very least, you need to change that, your, your clothes. At least we talk about a word like bacteria, and always yeah. you always have a negative connotation, but you there do, are but it's, good bacteria. You've got to have bacteria in yeah. your life, and or you're a, not going to have a life. That's right. It's a double-edged sword, too, because uh, you know, with all the sanitizer we've been throwing on our hands over the last year and a half, it stopped a lot of people, you know, obviously it's a COVID uh, necessity. Didn't we learn how that did work? Didn't, it but didn't we learn how many people must not have been washing their hands? But in, Yeah, I know. I see it all the time. Uh, you know, you walk out of the uh, toilet at the footy, and you go, oh, 12 blocks around. We didn't uh, wash our hands. Oh, oh. Maybe we should follow their trend. Washing and scrubbing your skin uh, can actually cause your skin to become dry and irritated, yeah. and, and you're breaking the skin. I mean, tiny little in tiny little ways. Mm. And uh, this Dr. Chris says dry, cracks, dry, cracked skin may allow bacteria and allergens to breach the barrier that skin is supposed to be providing, allowing skin infections and allergic reactions to mm. occur. So, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily shower every day. Mm. You may feel a bit better about yourself today and you may tell this to all the people yes. that have a go at you about it. Yes, and of course... Hit them with some research. Stick to the old motto, shower with a friend. I am going to stick to showering too. And yep. if I wash away my bacteria, so be it. Yep. We love a good uh, you know, biography movie. Over the years, there have been some fantastic ones. And of course, in recent times, Bohemian Rhapsody still... I think blows us all away. You yeah. don't even have to be a Freddie Mercury or Queen fan to find that movie fantastic. It was mind blowing. Rocket wasn't it? Man was pretty good. Yeah, which was more of a musical than uh, more of a musical, but it was still a drama. biopic. Yes. Um, uh, there's a couple of stories today. Bjorn Ulvaeus has ruled out any ABBA biopics coming up, whereas oh. at the other end of the scale, Boy George has given an update on his forthcoming biopic, which is called Karma Chameleon, okay. and he's casting, and it's casting in a new video calling for actors around the world to audition to play him in the movie. It's going to be interesting who's, to see who ends up actually playing it's a Boy shame George. about the ABBA one, because I reckon so, if Joel Edgerton put on a bit of weight, he could be a good <laughs> Benny behind the keyboard, don't you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Doing Waterloo? I mean, it is a... They, they were their story is incredible. It Abba, is incredible from Eurovision to yeah. world domination. Love them or hate them, mm. uh, I think that would be a very good biopic. And I am looking forward to the Boy George one. But question for you today yep. on thirteen ten sixty five: Who would you like to see a biopic made about? Actually, I've got it. Uh, yes, Todd Johnson and V Capri. <laughs> The biopic based around Perth, Western Australia. Would they, would they think this would get people excited? I'm pretty sure Todd would be able to play himself. Todd could, well, you could get any handsome guy to play Todd, really. That's doable. Be, and they could talk about, you know, the early days when they appeared on Countdown. Uh, you think about 1987 in Perth, Lance Karapetkov, the uh, keyboard player. He had a better mullet than Adrian Barrich at the Eagles. <laughs> I think you could <laughs> zoom in when they did those Nook and Buster gigs or the Raffles Rippers. Stop it. No, you know, okay. you walk into the, you know, the, where, the, where Spotlight is now, and that's where the Build pub the was. the whole Nooky set. And every time you walk into the uh, the Nook and Barra, and there'd be 600 girls at the front and all their boyfriends at the back grumbling, going, these guys with mullets can't stand them. <laughs> girls, my girlfriend likes, <laughs> like Todd, right. my guy Brian. Okay, so that's your vote. That's my vote. pre biopic. I yeah. am still really keen for them to finally make a good Janis Joplin oh, yes. biopic. The I Rose mean, was sort of a tenuous, well, the Rose, wasn't it? Well, the Rose, there was Midler. always, they always said, this isn't about Janis Joplin, but it was so about Janis yeah, Joplin. And Bette Midler did a fantastic She's job. brilliant. But I would like to see something that is openly about Janis Joplin okay. following Janis Joplin's incredible story. And tragic demise. How good was The Doors? I mean, the yeah. Jim Morrison story was amazing. Yeah, it was brilliant. So that would be my pick. Okay, but for... would you come and see Haunting Me, The Life of Todd Johnson and V. Capri? <laughs> Come on, Lace. Back me up. The guys are legends. The title is awesome. <laughs> Haunting me, of course. Who would you love to see the subject of a biopic? Peter in Greenmount, hello. Yeah, hello, how are you? Yeah, good, good Pete. Who have you got? I've got uh, Malcolm Douglas. Um, I thought he was uh, one of our first real conservationist, uh, you know, a real true Bushman and a real true Australian. He totally was, and I loved his shows. He was like... Even pre Leyland Brothers, wasn't he? Yeah, it was before he, Steve Irwin. He was sure. before Steve Irwin, and he was before Albie Mangles kind of cheapened the whole thing <laughs> by turning it yeah, into a was. wet t shirt competition rather than oh, conservation. Judy, Judy, Judy Green was very talented. Oh, he was a bit of a year. <laughs> yeah. Who do you reckon should play Malcolm? Malcolm, um, I'd say. Uh the full form for the West Coast Eagles. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll find the one who's got the, the closest right. hair. I was thinking maybe Brian Kennedy. Brown. Jo- Josh Kennedy. <laughs> Josh Kennedy. Hey, JK. Josh yeah, Kennedy. now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Malcolm Douglas. Thank you, Peter. 
Thank you. Have a good day, Peter. Yeah, I think the Hemsworth. I think Malcolm Douglas was a bit a too Hemsworth? wiry to be I think a played Hemsworth's by Hemsworth. A bit too pretty. Yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah. you may be too muscly as well, because Malcolm was a bit of a uh, bush kind of guy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. John in Mandra. Hello. Hey guys. Who would you like to see? Uh, I'd like to actually say and make a uh, biopic about uh, ACDC and how they made their way back to the top after the passing of Bond Scott. Do yeah, you gold. think that someone somewhere down the track has been trying to get that into a movie for a while, wouldn't you? Because there's such a story there. Incredible story, isn't oh, it? It's, I don't know, uh, to Australia is one of the biggest ones that everybody would like to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially here in Perth and WA. Yeah, well, and the impact a, and the success know, of Highway to Hell, that, US, that event that day, John, was incredible. I would yeah. suspect that there are negotiations going on somewhere with that one and have been for a while. So let's, fingers crossed, that they eventually get something together. Oh, I hope so. And John, you know, this is a bit sad to think of, but I could just imagine the late Heath Ledger could, could have played Bond. He would have done that beautifully. You know, like he could have uh, really put uh, that off. Mm. Yeah, he probably would have, actually. Yeah, mm. but there's a few current day actors would probably uh, be able to uh, come up with the goods. He was such a larrikin, wasn't he? And uh, Brian, yeah. still, Brian Johnson been in the band a lot longer than Bond, but still seen as the new guy because he was such a legend. <laughs> mm. Thanks, bud. Thanks, John. No worries, guys. Billy and Ball Divers, who would you like to see in a biopic? Hi, guys. Hey, um, I'm not sure if a lot of listeners will remember um, this guy or know of him, but Benny Hill. <laughs> oh, Benny uh, Hill. How could you forget oh my gosh. Benny Hill? Yeah, look, I, I love listening uh, or watching him on TV. I wasn't allowed him as a child. Yeah. Um, I sneak into the passageway yeah. and lay on the floor and have my head peeking around the corner of the... Um, frame of the doorway there to watch it, but it was, it pretty was bawdy. the best show ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. will have yakety sax in my head for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I never took myself seriously and I still don't today all because of that show. Yeah, and isn't it sad, Billy? It would be cancelled in the first five minutes. I was going to say, could you imagine getting it across the line today, Billy? No. Um, I don't know. I'm <laughs> really not, but you know, anything so good last one. We probably need it more these days You'd than ever. Right, Billy, yeah. I mean, <laughs> even before yeah. you saw any uh, boobs and backsides, uh, you probably someone pats a bald guy on the head Chase. and they go, oh, we're going to cancel it. <laughs> and guys, you know who I would love to see playing Benny Hill? Who you got? Which is pretty far out there, but Melissa McCarthy, I think she oh. could pull it off. Oh. Yeah, she could pull it off. I can't believe, yeah. I can't believe she hasn't thought of it. That's inspired right. casting, Billy. I like that, because I was thinking, what are you going to yeah. say, James Corden? Or, uh, l- yeah. That's what I, you no, know, I like thinking out of the box. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks, guys. And thanks, I love the, the ACDC idea. That was great. Yeah, yeah. it was a goodie, wasn't it? Yeah. Lo- yeah, love that thank idea. you, guys. Have a great morning. Thanks, too, Billy. Good bye. to hear your voice. Melissa McCarthy. That's some inspired casting. Yeah, she really thought about that. Yeah. yeah very cool. We're talking biopics because uh, we do love them, and the latest this morning is that Boy George has invited people to audition to play him in his upcoming biopic, Karma Chameleon, while Bjorn Ulvaeus mm. has ruled out any... ABBA by a pic. Okay. Oh, never say never, Bjorn. <laughs> Let's go to Canning Vale. G'day, Nick. How are you? Good, Nick. Who would you like to see in a biopic? I'd like to see Mark McGowan in a biopic. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> Who do you reckon would play him? Well, ideally it would be Mark McGowan, but if we couldn't get him, I reckon Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Bring me back my borders. <laughs> hey, Liam Neeson. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> if you I leave- He's pretty tough. If you cross the border, yeah. I will find you. <laughs> Hunt you down. <laughs> oh, Liam. I love That's it. funny. Liam Neeson in the Mark McGowan story. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thanks, mate. No worries. Have a great day. Liam Neeson. <laughs> Liam, I wasn't expecting to say someone. No, I wasn't. Especially with such a strong accent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wendy in Morley. You're our last call. Who do you want to see? Hi, guys. Hey, Wendy. Well, Laurie- this one would have to be a blockbuster. Yeah. And I reckon it should be Clancy. Oh, <laughs> the Clancy story. <laughs> and you know who you know who should play him? Hugh really? Jackman. Because oh, have you yeah. seen Clancy? He looks just like Hugh Jackman. No, I wish. You do. Yeah. And you could put different wigs on, you know, the mullet. The, oh, yeah, I did the mullet. Stuff happening with the hair, the perm, <laughs> everything. Never you know? lived 80s Clancy. Never lived down the mullet. I knew 80s <laughs> Clancy. And did. that mullet was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she even tugged on it once. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. <laughs>
Don't worry. Thanks, Wendy. Oh. You've embarrassed me, but thanks. Good to hear you, Good to hear you calling. All right. More of this podcast in just a sec. 96 FM. There's a study for everything, as you well know. And uh, now, contrary to what you might believe, a new study mm. claims that hangovers actually get less severe the older you get. Oh, pray tell. It goes against almost everything that you might believe. But according to the scientists, mm. and they're the scientists, uh, behind this study, they say it's completely true. The researchers say hangovers get easier with age, even when you consider that older people tend to not drink as much and less frequently. <laughs> Did they ask? <laughs> yeah, they didn't do I the survey your here. Pardon? <laughs> oh, they're making that up. Uh, anyway, one potential reason behind this is that you simply get used to it. Right. And you deal with it better. Yeah. Reduced pain sensitivity as you get older is another thing the scientists have uh, said could mean those a little longer in the tooth just perceive their morning after illness to be not as bad. What? Because life already hurts because you're old. It's already is painful. Is this what they're saying? Well, it depends how many mirrors you what, you've got in your house, I guess. These scientists are clearly all under 30, and I don't like oh, don't a you single like, one you of don't them. don't like the results they've come up with? I have my own theory okay. on um, uh, hangovers getting easier as you get older. Yep. I reckon, uh, you know, because when you're maybe a, a uni student, you're sharing with six sure. other people, yep. Yep. you're buying a cask of something rubbish something and you're cheapy. drinking that. It's okay. full of preservatives. It's horrible. Okay. Uh, when you get older, your your tastes refine a bit. You mm. might be able to, uh, in, you know, indulge in a slightly better quality wine okay. and that is less likely of course, I'm only speaking for wine drinkers yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. That is less likely to leave you feeling seedy. Yeah, so you've gone up, you've gone into Dan Murphy's, you've gone to a slightly higher shelf. I You're most certainly have. I'm still going to Dan Murphy's. Something a bit nicer? But yes, okay. it's all relative. What's that jump from like $8 to 18 or 25 What are you looking at? Yeah, yep, yep, that's a nice a red. Good, that's a, yeah, I like a, you know. Something you, when you're young, you say you can get a decent wine for under ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. As you get older, yeah. you're less inclined to believe yourself. Yeah, absolutely. But you can it's, still get a very decent wine for a good price. So did they mention I something about being older and drinking a little less? Is that perhaps when you go into that room, yeah, you forgot, I don't you know forgot what you went into the room for, and you're going, oh, that's right, it was meant to be another bottle. Scientists don't know everything. No, they don't. You put a lab coat on, and you're not necessarily <laughs> knowing your stuff. Interesting story about uh, how music's good for the heart. Yeah, it sort of popped up in the last uh, 48 hours, this story, mm-hmm. saying that uh, music lovers, listening to music uh, lowers your blood pressure and heart rate, according to a study in Hiroshima mm. at University Hospital in Japan. Unless you're listening to Tex Perkins or maybe a little bit of The Cure, your heart might well, start racing too much. It found uh, that people at risk of uh, you know having high blood pressure and and heart problems, uh, who listen to relaxing music for 30 minutes a day, five days a week for a month, had a significant fall in heart rate. It doesn't specify what qualifies as relaxing music. No, it doesn't. I mean, one might think Enya is going to be more relaxing than, say, <laughs> uh, Twisted Sister. But I think whatever floats your boat is also going to be what lowers your blood pressure. I mean, I've seen mm. people get visibly stressed when I've put on Enya. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I was about to <laughs> I mean, threaten you. I may like a bit of Enya, but not everybody does. So how about if you're going... You you paid the one hundred and eighty dollars and you go for a day spa, which includes being in that room and someone oh. massaging you and you know rubbing your back with rocks or whatever they're doing. Yeah, would you prefer to have the Enya esque music or would you prefer that they gave you the well, choice? I don't want Twisted Sister. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes, I'd rather Enya. Yeah, but if, a Clannard. Oh, oh yeah, Ooh, well yeah. similar kind of. That's their family. That's yeah. the whole lot of them. That is that is the uh, <laughs> several Enyas, <laughs> a couple of adults. all at once. Yeah, but if you're in there and the massage gets too tough, you, yeah, and you've got Twisted Sister on, we're not going to take it. <laughs> probably the appropriate song. <laughs> probably. 96 FM. The Bunch. Clazy and Lisa.